All right, so welcome to another episode of the Inspired to Thrive podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Garbett, and today I have someone special, a special guest joining me, uh, John Templeton. So I've known John Templeton for quite a few years now, and he's been a big catalyst in the journey in my life. And I'd just like to introduce him formally first and before we get into the conversation. So John is a mind, emotion, and life architect and international speaker with a passion for supporting others to achieve greatness in their lives. So he is a Guinness World Record holder, national bodybuilding champion, and ex-special forces and celebrity trainer, as well as he's speaking on stages alongside Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Dr. Deepak Chopra, and Dr. John Martini. John has coached Olympic athletes, professional sports teams, CEOs, multi-million dollar business owners, military and service personnel, as well as thousands of other people through his life-changing events and programs. So, John, thank you for joining me today. Dan, thank you for having me today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting. I've been wanting to get you on the show for a little while now and um, glad we're here. But uh, like I said, you've been a big part in my journey. I remember uh, I came across you on Instagram like maybe three or four years ago now when you were doing... I think it was a fire, uh, an event you were running on the Gold Coast here called Fired Up. I think it was called Fire Up. Fire Up. Fire Up. And um, I was starting to really explore personal development at that time and learn about, um, you know, beliefs and, you know, internal stories and just making those changes on a deeper level. And um, I could, I was really connecting with what you were talking about. And so that was like uh, what really intrigued me to reach out and speak to you. And, you know, four years later, you know, big changes in my life, but along that path, I've also witnessed a lot of the, the, your growth as well. Like, you know, watching you online, um, also knowing you on like a, a closer relationship as well, but just seeing the, the journey you've been on has been really inspiring. And, um, you know, I've, I've noticed that one thing that you do really great is you, you know, you go all in on what you're doing and you push, <laughs> you, know, you, you push, you push what you're doing. Like uh, you achieve things at a really high level and you can see that in your bio and, you know, as well as what I've witnessed since the time that I've known you. And so today I'm really excited to get into some of that psychology and the strategy around what allows you to, you know, uh, experience those things. Or uh, the thing that comes to mind for me is like, you know, really allow you to get, get what you want or get what you say you want so um what would you say is uh what would you say like some of the catalysts were for you in your journey like on your path well my journey started when my parents had sex so i don't know what the catalyst <laughs> for that was <laughs> uh so is there a specific time you mean like i've had a oh. lot of adventures in my life you know i spent uh, a year traveling around the world taking a lot of drugs and that's a different catalyst to going into personal development and starting businesses so yeah which, mm. which so part? If, if i was a bit more specific like mean um like one thing i see is like uh there's, there's people who who say they want something and they go out and they they pursue it and they they fully experience and achieve what it is that they want at a, at a de, like a high degree at which they want it and then there's other people that I've witnessed and even myself personally at times where um, there's things that I have said that I wanted or people that uh, they want something but they you know either fall short they don't achieve what it is that they say they want and to be more specific with my question, was I there a get, catalyst in, in your life which allowed you to develop this, uh, I don't know if it's like a drive or a uh, absolute certainty that you will achieve at that high level? Or I say this to a lot of people because they ask me and, <clears throat> and I don't want to put other people off and I'll explain it soon, but I got lucky. Somewhere along the line, I got lucky because as a kid, I was successful yeah. at sports but not successful at other areas of life. You see, all of us get dealt some cards, right? Mm. And in the Western society, the hand I got dealt wasn't a bad one in terms of, like, I, I actually started very skinny and very small. I played football and I played football in England where I grew up as a kid and I did really well. Mm. And so that 
I, like, I don't know what the catalyst for that is. Some, you know, doing exploring my childhood, it was, you know, mum didn't love me, so I had to <laughs> be a good athlete to get her love. Whether that's 100% true or not, I don't know. But that set me in a really good path for physical achievement, right? And mm-hmm. so if you look at my bio, it's all physical achievement. Um, Guinness World Record, you know, bodybuilding champion, even in the military being very successful CrossFit athlete, all of it's physical. Mm. Now you compare me to someone who crushes it intellectually, I like I suck. Mm. I'm not good there. So the, the it's like what I think we all well we do. We all have genius. We mm. all have some genius, and when we live true to that genius, mm. we thrive. So for me, it was the athletic side of things is really where I thrived, um, and the confidence that I got from that, mm. I could take into other areas. Um, but, you know, if I tried to do something that is just seriously not a strength of mine, it would take me maybe a lifetime of work to get average at it. Where if someone mm. was already, you know, being dealt those cards, it would take them years of work to get great at it. So mm. that's the way I see it. Gotcha. That's, that's super interesting. So do you think that, uh, like, genius, is that something that a person is born with? Or is that something that's um, uh, just the condition of their childhood? Both. Yeah. So it's genealogically mm. and you can, tr- so look at someone's genetics, right? They're going to have certain things they're probably better at and not better at genetically. Mm. And you can chat, you can track back genealogy now, like generationally, I think they're tracked back eight generations, but I can guarantee the law of cause and effect says that you could just track it back forever. You could track it back to the start of man, you know? Mm. So, so genealogically you've been, um, let's say your parents were born, they became conditioned through epigenetic expression, their genes changed, right? Your parents' mm. genes from birth to death were, or birth to your conception would have changed through epigenetic expression. And then you're born or you're conceived from those genes that, you know, your parents are currently, um, mm. ha- currently activated by. So you've got your gene- genealogical expression and then through your upbringing first off unconscious in the womb and the first Mm. couple of years quite an unconscious state you're being very highly conditioned Mm. and then you have your life lessons which condition you and again change your genetics as you're growing so it's all of it all of it is where your genius is kind of built because all genius is in my in my belief system your genius is you have abilities that are unique to you. Everybody is unique. And I described this the other night on a live video. It's like a Rubik's cube, right? Mm. Rubik's cube has got six sides, so six colors. And if it's a three by three cube, there's nine on each side. Nine times six, I think is 54. You're a mathematician. 54, yeah, 54. Right? And there are 43 quintillion different ways you can have the Rubik's cube, right? Yeah. With those with those squares. If you named all of those 54 squares with a number, then you got one there. Oh, Boom, yeah. right? So 43 <laughs> quintillion. And I say your personality is like a Rubik's cube. It mm. is, there's 43 quintillion different options. You know, it, from all of the genetic expressions, because you mm. get some people that look quite similar. You're like, oh, I've got a friend. I remember I was in, in Disneyland mm. in in in... France with a friend and we saw this girl that looked like one of our female friends from back in New Zealand and it was like they are literally identical so genealogically they would have had some really similar expressions but I can Mm -hmm. guarantee you through their conditioning and other things they would have uh, also very different personalities so Mm -hmm. your genius is your specific personality it is your you know people use the word your authentic um, Mm -hmm. self or your authentic expression that's your genius Mm -hmm. and when you play to that instead of being mm. conditioned by what society thinks or what your peer group thinks that's the big one through school is you mm. try and fit in then you're mm. you're not being your authentic self and you're going to be outside of your genius yeah so that, that kind of reminds me of like uh have you been have you looked i'm sure you've probably looked into the myers briggs system before and it kind of reminds me of like that the flow state in that system like uh like the the driver in that driver in the car it's like where you're where your natural natural capacities lies that kind of with the same sort of 
I would say so. I mean, I know Myers Briggs, INJT, or whatever it is called. Mm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Profiling, yeah. but I didn't yeah. know there was a flow state. But I'm assuming it's just when you're in your type, you're mm. at your best. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And like, uh, what would you say, like, for you know, a person listening? Where's the best place to start to even try and understand or unpack what your genius, what your genius is? I mean, like you were talking a lot about like genealogically and uh, epigenetically is going to really affect, really affect like who Forget you all are. That. Or yeah. You are. It's like, yeah, like where would a person even start like in this world that, you know, we're being bombarded with so much stuff online and um, maybe not what everyone's saying is going to be ideal for it's easy. You know, everyone, you know? It's easy. Look yeah. back at your life, at the moments in time you that you, the moments in your life where you've lost track of time, because mm. those transcendental moments when you lose track of time, you literally are are vibing at your highest vibe. Mm. And I won't go into the quantum physics of it, but when you are vibing high, you're traveling faster. Mm. I don't know if, so if people are listening. I'm like waving my finger really fast, <laughs> and so you're you're closer to the speed of light. So you're actually mm. doing more in the same amount of time, which makes it perceive like you've got mm. more time. Whereas if you're not at your best self and you're low vibe, you're sluggish, you're feeling heavy, mm. you're you've got fear, you're um, carrying guilt or shame or any of these, even anger. I mean, anger is a kind of faster emotion, but. Mm because it's it's motivating you can like you want to do stuff when you're angry but sadness yeah. depression apathy they're all very low vibrational states and and you get nothing done in those states even mm. though you have the same 24 hours so look back at your life at all of the times where you've lost track of time and mm. it, it, you just know those moments because they just feel like bliss they feel like you're just mm. caught up in the moment and you are, you're connected to, it's a spiritual experience. People call it a flow state, spiritual yeah. experience. It's all the same. And so that is the, that is the compass to, mm. to your gifts. Uh, yeah. That's super interesting. So I was, I was going to ask you this a little bit later, but it's a perfect segue for it. Now I've heard Do Dr. John Martini talk about like values before and, um, uh, he, he talks about like how, you know, when you tap into your core values and understand what your core values are in life, then you can organize your goals and your whole life around those set of values. Um, but then I've also heard people talk about, or, you know, even um, different periods, different stages through my life, my values have shifted, um, you know, recently becoming a father and those, you know, starting business, those types of things shift, shift values in my experience. Like, if a person's got like a, a goal or a target or something that they want to achieve in their life or move forward with, is it important to like set those goals around your values or is it important to like identify values to support that goal or is it a mix of both? <laughs> the reason I ask is because like, I know one thing that I, uh, I love hearing like when you, when you're speaking about it is, is like internal congruence. And I know that, if I'm not aligned with my values, I don't have that internal congruence. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it depends how you define values. I went, I've been down this rabbit hole for years. And, yeah. and so for anybody watching or listening, actually, Dan, what's your definition of values? Cause that's going to make or break this conversation. Yeah. So uh, to me, a value is like a motive. It's like, uh, you know, in life, I, I feel like we've got like the, the stories that have been sort of conditioned over time that give us that sense of, who we are, where we are in this lifetime, what we like, how we fit in. And then we've got our like beliefs that help us, you know, have this filter on in life, but it's like the values are the, the motives or the, the things that uh, we find important in life. And whether that's for me, it's like, um, you know, a, a deeper one that I had for a while is like recognition and um, like that, that recognition by others. And that was like a deeper core value of mine that I, wasn't really in touch with but mm -hmm. yeah i feel like it's like an, a motive that we've been mm -hmm. sort of conditioned to based on our cultural upbringing or um mm -hmm. society or, or family yeah 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 so so that's your definition of it right um yeah. i've studied tony robbins his definition is deepest desires greatest fears so your values mm -hmm. are feelings 
there are feeling states that you want to either attain or avoid. Um, Demartini has a technical uh, definition of values, which I'm not going to get it correct, but I'll get the like the principle right, which is a essentially a mechanical, um, uh, like a, something mechanical, something tangible to fill a um, ethereal or intangible need. So it's like you might have a void in your life. So he says your voids create your values. So where you have a void in your life, you mm. will then, to balance out the void, say you feel uh, empty, that's a void, right? Mm. To, to fill that void, you are going to go after something like money or a relationship, mm -hmm. something tangible that can fill the void. So that's his definition of values. Tony Robbins is different. Tony Robbins is an end state, an end feeling. So when mm -hmm. you get the money, you get gotcha. happiness or you get significance mm. or you get, um, I don't know what you get from having money, a certainty, like you get safety mm. and security, like this end, this feeling state you're chasing. So it depends how you define it. And mm. I've read all the books and I've looked into it and, and, and the, I prefer Tony's model than Demartini's in mm. states that you're looking. So it's your deepest desires. Mm. And someone might say, well, my deepest desire is to travel the world. But it's because you are moving towards a feeling. It's like, well, why do you want to travel the world? There'll be a feeling that you're, that you're essentially chasing, an unmet need that you're essentially mm. going after. And so that's what I believe values are. So he's, he's saying like with uh, like, Tony Robbins uh, view of it, you know, it's like, like an end state. He's saying that like, um, just say if a person wants to travel the world and that end state is adventure or um, variety, variety or something like that. Mm -hmm. He's saying that uh, rather than pursuing like traveling the world, you can just live with more variety in your life. So, so this is state. right. So this is yeah. now we're going to talk about what Martini would call a value and Tony Robbins would call it a vehicle. So mm -hmm. Tony's like you, have the vehicle of travel to get from where you are to the end state, mm. right? So you use travel as your vehicle. Someone might use, I don't know, a swingers party to get their variety, right? To go from where they are to the end state of having variety in their life. Yeah. So the vehicle you choose to use can either be, mm. again, like essentially a disempowering vehicle or an empowering vehicle. Does it take you... Um, the way it's broken down in Tony's model is, does the vehicle feel good for you, right? Mm -hmm. Does it, is it, does it feel good for you? And is it good for you? So mm -hmm. we could look at smoking or drinking. These yeah. vehicles, they might feel good, but they're not good. So mm -hmm. they'd be class one. Class two is when it feels good and it is good for you. Mm -hmm. um, that could be travel. Yeah. Class three is when it feels good, is good, and it serves others. Mm. Class four is when it feels good, is good, serves others, and serves humanity as a whole. And so mm. the the goal is to look at the vehicles you're using to meet your needs to, to reach these end states and and transform those vehicles from class one and two vehicles to class three and four vehicles. And you can do that. You are essentially a force for good and fulfillment mm. is like yours. Cool. That's that's cool. That's super interesting. That perspective. I've never heard heard that that model before. And like for because I know that like, you know sometimes sometimes people will like you know elicit elicit their values or be at this point they're like oh well what do I value what do I what what is it that I actually uh, want like what's that end state that I want I found over you know my my couple of years you know, being in the field that I'm in now, I've, I've noticed that at this, the first sort of things that people typically come out with aren't really the, the core. They're not really mm -hmm. like the, the, the core desires, the core feelings, the core, um, you know, end states that they want to experience. It's like all this superficial stuff. Mm -hmm. So for more specifically for people listening, like what, how can they, how can they discover those core things? Is it cool? Yeah. So before I answer that, I just want to say some people also say, what do you value? And they'll say 
personality traits like oh, i value discipline or i value focus mm -hmm. those are not values okay they're traits so sometimes people can get confused there i know i did when i was learning this stuff so and your initial question was like should you have goals that fit within your values or should you bring mm -hmm. in new values to support your goals we can talk about we can uh, i can answer that afterwards Go back. yeah cool so right now the question is remind me uh, so like for people listening and they're like, all right, well, how the, how the hell do I find out what is important to me? Like, what is, what is it that I value? Yeah. Then so if you're <laughs> cut through, cut through the surface stuff, it yeah. depends. You are not you, right, Dan? I yeah. mean, you are you, but everybody can admit they have split personalities to a degree. It's like, sometimes you're happy. Sometimes you're sad. Sometimes you're laughing. Sometimes you're crying. Sometimes you're angry. Like you, you have these different personalities and when you're angry sometimes you say stuff that the funny version of you wouldn't say and so it depends when you do your values it's almost like if you're feeling fearful yeah. and you do your values i can guarantee you're going to say things that are based in keeping you safe and protecting you mm -hmm. but if you are you know at like a dance party having the time of your life you're going to say mm -hmm. oh well what's important to me is is like you're going to you're going to say things that are all about thriving as opposed to surviving so when you you know what state are you in when you do them mm -hmm. um d martini's way is 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 he's got 13 questions and it's it's how do you spend your time he says your life demonstrates what you value the most i disagree with him um but he says your life demonstrates it so it's like the 13 question is like, how do you spend your money? So if you, it, cause it's tangible, you look at all your money, what do you spend it most on? Yeah. If you spend the majority of it on food and rent, you, you value like survival base mm -hmm. more than someone who's like, oh, I don't really eat much. I just put it all into my business. Mm -hmm. You know that they value their business more. So mm -hmm. like, how do you spend your time? How do you spend your money? Well, where do you have the best memory? What subjects do you have the best memory in? Um, where are you the most organized? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there are 13 of them. So, yeah, so then, it, it's more behavior based, isn't it? Like, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. that, that, and that's why you come up with like mechanistic things like business relationship. They're mm. not feelings, right? They're not feelings. So in Tony's model, it's about feelings. So you just, you just literally ask yourself, what mm. feelings do I find myself desiring the most um mm -hmm. i haven't been through tony's trainings i've just studied and read books and things like that mm -hmm. but yeah yeah that's that's the methodology for myself when i take people through it i go back to those transcendental moments mm -hmm. um and because that's that's your really your highest value mm -hmm. um but a lot of people don't live by it because their fears and their doubts um stop them essentially mm. yeah yeah right so uh yeah a couple of questions came from that for me but i'll i'll circle back to what we mentioned first like uh based off based off that do you see that it's uh more effective or beneficial for a person to like set goals within within those uh values or is it yeah, you're beneficial as you know, change change what you value to achieve a goal. Nah, you'd be you'd yeah. be a bit silly to change what you value to achieve a goal. There will be times maybe where you need little shifts, mm. um, but is it no? Yeah, because I guess like uh, like one couple of things. What's that the point? Is, is like change the, change the vehicle maybe. Change the, the vehicle. Reach. That might be it. Yeah. yeah. Like, just just imagine like a uh, you know a person person like i remember a stage from in my life like oh, you know i i was massively not living the life i wanted but you know the the catalyst for me to change it was i was massively out of shape like you know massively overweight so um uh, maybe it was me denying one of my values to start with that put me into that place but then um that journey allowed me to realize how much i valued health or feeling that uh that vigor or that vitality mm -hmm. within Mm -hmm. And um, I could imagine like, you know, another transition for people would just be like starting up a business and it's like, all right, well, um, yeah, it's probably just tapping, tapping into that deeper, deeper need or that deeper feeling that's going to allow them to 
to like thrive or grow in that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And <clears throat> like, this is why most people fail their news resolutions mm. is because they, they're not tapping into their truth. They're saying it because society says it. Mm. So they're out of their genius. If you, if you, you, when you're in your genius, you won't fail. Yeah. It's not to say in the short term, you won't have obstacles and setbacks, but you won't fail when you're mm. in your genius because it's, it, it will give you so much energy that you'll literally, I say to people, you'll walk over broken glass to achieve your, to, to live your purpose because mm-hmm. it's, it's just who you are born to be. It's who you are. Mm-hmm. And so, and so the, the people that maybe don't achieve their goals or whatever, they're not, they're not in their values or in their genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And one, one thing that popped into mind for me, I forget who said it, but um, it's like um, to be yourself in a world that's constantly trying to make you something that you're not is one of the greatest achievements in life. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously a big part of that's like the conditioning that people are exposed to throughout their life for, um, for what you mentioned like earlier on when you said like, you know, it's so important to be in these, you know, these flow states or these empowered states to actually, first of all, identify what you value and identify what you want to achieve in relation to the, to your values. Like, uh, it's obviously important, important then, like you mentioned that it's not always going to be that state. You're going to be going these ebbs and flows or, you know, have other, other moments in your life that sort of pull you out of those states. Um, like, how is it that like you have, like you stay focused on what you want? Like, like, uh, I suppose that come down to like some strategy or some, um, some routines in life that, that you sort of build out around that or. Yeah. The first thing you just have to know is what do you want? What do you want in life? And what are you prepared to die for? What, uh, you know, what hill are you prepared to die on? Mm. For, for a mom, it might be to protect the children. Like, for a mom, it's like, I will die before you touch my child, right? And so you could say, well, then that is her purpose. If that is the most important thing in the world to her, that's her area of genius. Or a guy, a dad, it's like, if that is the most important thing, then that is that is the, yeah. the genius or the, the purpose. And so getting really clear on what you are willing to die for. Mm. And not just say it, I mean like in your body, you would rather die than not achieve that thing or not not experience it. Because achieving is, I don't know, it's kind of like you tick it off. When you're living your purpose, it's not about ticking off. It is about being it, living it, experiencing it. So, and some, for a lot of people that's created through pain. They go through a painful experience and then essentially they want the opposite or they want to protect people from experiencing that and so they Mm. they come into a place of purpose Mm. um or it could be money related when when we talk about the creation of values it's essentially as demartini says your voids create your values so you experience the pain you want the Mm. opposite of it or you experience the pleasure and you fucking love it so much Mm. so so that that quite often the people that have been through the most pain will be very in touch with their purpose because they're like and it is a it is a crossover of their their genius, their gifts, their talents, with that, um, you know, the, the pain they've experienced, and then wanting the opposite. Well, how can I not experience that again, or how can I support others to not experience again? So there's like this. I say your purpose is the sort of intersection of self expression and service. So it's mm-hmm. you being your genius and and serving serving if Mm -hmm. you're not serving you 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 won't be living your purpose but -hmm. serving can come in many ways shapes or forms like an athlete is serving a crowd like you're you're meeting the needs of others for for Mm -hmm. entertainment so to speak look at a comedian you're you're entertaining crowds so yeah it kind of sounds like it's uh like a bit of a i don't want to call it a psychological switch but it's kind of like this switch that's going on in your mind to like uh like take your focus off off yourself and putting it onto the the greater mission yeah the greater yeah the greater purpose or the 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 people that are benefiting from it or the yeah that's interesting really interesting yeah Yeah. and when your when your life is 
in survival, you won't even have an opportunity to experience the op- like love. Mm-hmm. You won't have an experience to op- an opportunity to experience that those moments of transcendental bliss because you're so focused on preservation. There's mm-hmm. no opportunity because the more you pre- preservation is self. It's separate mm-hmm. from others. It's like how can I preserve? Whereas once you get out of survival. You, you, it's no longer about preservation. It's about mm. we. So that's really the, when you say there's a switching point, it is, it's, it's once mm. your, your needs are completely met, mm. um, and you feel fulfilled essentially, the switch is, oh, well, mm. I'm good. Like now I'm going to give back to my human family. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. So, um, like, you know, just say, just say person listening and they're like, all right, well, you know, right now, right now, I don't have the needs met. Like right now, I just say my, my relationship's really suffering and that's causing like a lot of conflict in my life or my health's really suffering is causing a lot of conflict in my life. So it's just having that ability to like really dial in on that specific need that's not being met or that specific area of your life that's not being met, you know, resolve it. And then once that resolves, it's going to create that space for something more to come from. Yeah. yeah. Give me one second, Dan. Right. Um, sorry, dogs just went into... That's totally cool. They just went into survival mode. (laughs) Um, so yes, you have to fill your own cup up first. And that's what the first part of life really is. It really is getting your stuff together, Mm. you know? And some people never come out of survival mode. They really, they don't. And Mm. that's just their journey. Um, the ones that, and it's not fulfilling. You're constantly more 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 i don't feel safe i need to protect myself financially i need you know a better car so people respect me it's it's Mm. it's all feeding the the ego essentially um but yes the and there's two ways to do it you can you can have more things right Mm. and so so this is the, the the saying is you can either change your perception or change your procedure right so changing your perception is changing the way you look at it are your need mm. are you really in danger are your needs not fulfilled truly mm. and you might be able to change the way you're looking at it and get your needs met internally mm. or you change your procedure it's like well my job is not fulfilling me therefore i'm going to get a new job mm. and so i say you, you do both you do both changing your perception is um what i would do in the the, the short term because that's if you can just be totally happy within yourself Mm. you're good to go. Um, but also changing your procedure because other people are also out there potentially in survival mode, potentially not um, working towards your best interests. And you might have to strategically position yourself or do a job or change career or change, you know, your spouse or your partner, do something different to actually get your needs met. And that's where conditioning comes in. And mm. a lot of people are too scared to make those changes. Mm. Can you give me one second, Dan? They're still going, and I just want to make sure the mailman just... Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, you're saying that, um, yeah, some people are just too afraid or too, um, you know, un- too afraid of that uncertainty of changing and, um, you know, putting themselves in a new environment or changing your relationship or just, just letting those circumstances go. And, um, yeah, I feel I, I, feel, I can probably speak like pers- uh, like personally on one of those like a, around that is like you know I remember like for me growing up I was always like the quiet guy always you know the shy guy always never would be out- outwardly spoken um you know just always taught to you know just respect listen and you know not speak up in different situations when I was younger and for me like actually putting myself into a position now where you know I'm pretty much uh, a leader for others now in, in certain respects. And like, you know, that was, that was quite, quite confronting at the start, you know, I was like, fuck, like, like one of the <laughs> biggest things for me was like, you know, like speaking in front of the stage or, um, you know, changing the way that I was speaking. Like I was always like monotone and I found that I know this is something that you've touched on as well before. And it's like, we're so conditioned to speak, in certain tones and like uh, certain vocabularies that like when a person starts changing even those things about themselves, it's like, it can feel like it's uh, super uncomfortable. Yeah, 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 for sure. (laughs) 
And I mean, it really is down to that. Even getting a haircut. I say to people, when did you decide that your haircut was your haircut? Like, mm. like, why don't you have long dreadlocks? It's, it's conditioning. And people don't even think about it in their day-to-day -day life. Like, why do I look like this? Mm. Why do I choose to look this way when I can change how I look by growing facial hair, shaving, um, mm. you know, dyeing my... It's all... And so your voice absolutely is the same. And you can, you can train it to be different. Um, mm. I moved from England to New Zealand as a kid and I lost my accent in two weeks. It's conditioning. Mm. It is conditioning. So we are way more conditioned than we even realize. And so a lot of people are just literally walking around as robots. Mm. Like, and they don't question, they might question why is life like this, but they don't do anything with it afterwards. Yeah. But very few people even question it. They just literally live as a, as a human robot. Um, and when you, when you see that, and understand how the transformation can occur that you can achieve anything you want mm. um yeah that's when life gets exciting because mm. you can create you yeah. you can you can recreate you in any way you want and the the what what people really need to do is recreate themselves in alignment with their genius with their purpose with their gifts mm. and that is when they're going to just succeed and be way more fulfilled oh yeah yeah, I think uh, I think I read in a book by P.D. P. D. Uspensky, uh, the, the Psychology of Man's Possible Evolution. He speaks about speaks about that to a degree. He's like society will develop a person to a certain extent, but it's only through their own pursuits that they can achieve something greater. And um, yeah, if he, he talks about there being like two conditions to to achieving that. It's like you must know what you want, and you must want it really bad like you must want it enough believe it's possible yeah to keep going with it yeah you know and um yeah so like what 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 is it that you found super beneficial in your life for those moments where you know you're you're creating a life in alignment with with your genius and um you know you've got all of this stuff to potentially do or um to to get through what is it that uh really allows you to to just keep going or have that strong work ethic around what you're doing. I kind of said at the start, and I've said this to athletes I've coached as well as like, you have to be willing to die for it. Mm. And where does that desire mm -hmm. come from? You know, where does that yes. desire come from? It's like, it's a very masculine tendency, very testosterone driven, very competitive. Mm. Like I will beat you and it doesn't mm. matter how hard it gets. I will beat you. Um, that kind of drive is very awesome, but it's also detrimental in, mm. on the flip side in relationships. I haven't been, you know, in the past haven't been great. And that's an area of my life. Now I have to learn and recondition myself in. Mm. So what keeps me going is, well, there've definitely been times where I've, I've thought of, I've quit. I've probably 90% mm. quit 10% of me is like, Oh, maybe I'll keep going. Mm. And you know, there are times that I've failed and I've talked about, failing special forces selection where i literally failed i quit i quit mm. it was and and looking you know i looking back now i was meant to quit because my life would be very 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 different if i didn't mm. and so um the yeah the drive to keep keep going is i couldn't imagine life without having experienced that that my vision Right. Mm. So you said the guy's name. I've got the book here. I've not read it. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Uh, P.D. Uspensky. Right. P.D. Uspensky. Number one, have the vision. That's yeah. the that's the, the key. And when you come up with your vision, obviously it can, can be a long process or you can just lie on your bed for 10 minutes and think about what you would love. That vision is there because you believe it's going to meet your needs. Mm. Right. It's going to fill the voids you have. That's why you have a vision and a dream. And so mm. that's the first step. And then make that so such a potent and powerful vision that you spend your life relentlessly pursuing it and mm. enjoy enjoying the process otherwise then yeah. i would argue well it's not you're not on purpose if you're not enjoying the process you're not on yeah. purpose um a lot of people chase money right and it's like that's not your purpose and it's mm. painful along the way so that's the first thing and and you nailed it in fact i did an instagram post this morning i said you need two things I don't know if you read the post. No, it was like, yeah, you need a vision and you need 
belief you can do it. And sometimes the belief's not there. Mm. Sometimes it's not. And maybe a helping hand comes in. Maybe you get inspiration from seeing someone else doing something great. Um, and, and there are some days where you just have to pick yourself up off the ground mm. and be like, what would I do if I wasn't doing this? It's like nothing. Okay, well, stop crying about it you know, and get back on the horse because you need to go again. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think like, uh, like one, one question that I've, I've found beneficial myself is like, you know, there's definitely been moments in my life where I've like, you know, had moments where I've just, you know, doubted what I was doing or had that disbelief in if it was possible. And like, uh, I think just that, that question is like, you know, what if it is possible? What if I can actually do it? And that's been super beneficial for me, you know, like, uh, just opening up the potential, like in in that you know ability, yeah. to it, you know. Well, so. well, this that's the cycle, and I've talked about this a lot. Is the belief cycle? Belief is everything. Belief mm -hmm. is everything. Like, what if I can't? If that's your belief, what happens if this doesn't work? Okay, it's a pessimistic approach. What if this doesn't work? You're not going to be uh, attacking your tasks or your goals with vigor mm -hmm. or energy. And so you put a half-assed effort in. This is what most people do. They put a half-assed effort in because deep down somewhere, they don't believe it's possible. Mm -hmm. And so they put a half-assed effort in and they get half-assed results. Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh, I'm not as good as that person or that person. And that reconfirms their belief that they're not yeah. good enough even if it's unconscious and then they put even less effort in and it slowly dwindles down until they're like, nah, this isn't for me. Yeah. Whereas if they shifted their belief, remember I said, you can change your perception or your procedure. If you change your perception, it's like, well, what if this is possible? Okay. That's a perception mm -hmm. shift. It's like, okay, well, if this is possible, in fact, this is possible. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put in a hundred percent effort, 110% effort. Those things that can, could distract me, they won't because my vision is more important and it's mm -hmm. possible. So you put in 110% effort and you get results that equal the effort you put in, right? You get in mm -hmm. what you put out, you put out, you get out what you put in. Yeah. And so by simply, and then you succeed and you go, I knew it was possible. And then you're like, your confidence rises. You feel like the king or the queen. And all it was, was a shift in perception. Yeah. Nothing changed in your environment outside of you. And mm -hmm. so you can either be, um, at the effect of the environment, the environment mm. is causing an effect on you, or you can cause an effect within the environment and mm. the masters and the people that take control of their life cause an effect every day. They get up and they cause the effects they want to see in the world and in mm. their lives. Yeah. That's what, that's powerful. Hey, like just having that, having that ability that what is it like top down causation or something, I think it's called like the, uh, yeah. Brilliant. And like, what would you say to a person? Cause like, obviously uh, a large majority of a person's life potentially is happening unconsciously. And like another thing that I've heard you talk about, like that internal congruence, if a person's, you know, sitting there and they're like, all right, well, you know, I'm going to, going to go for this thing. They have that little bit of doubt pop in. If it was unconscious, like how could a person uh, become aware of that doubt in, in their, in their body? Like, cause I've heard you speak about like the, the nervous system before and talk about how you know when you're in congruence it's like you you, you bang on you're alive like what's how can you explore that or unpack that yeah and there might be two things here um the first thing i'll say is if you're unconscious you're unconscious so you don't yeah. know what you don't know and there are things right now that i don't know that i don't know um the only way to become aware of any doubts or fears is to become aware and the way we become aware is by asking the question Mm. Am I fearful? Am I doubtful? Questions direct focus. And so if you ask good questions, you're going to focus um, your awareness on different things. If I said to everyone mm. listening, um, have you ever seen a blue elephant? Your awareness has to think of a blue elephant to decide whether you've seen it or not. Right. So yep. by asking the question, um, and, you know, am I fearful right now? Mm. It, and you can, and a lot of some people, if they've got a big ego, will say, nah, nah, I'm not fearful. And mm. then you could say, are you are you too proud to admit that you're fearful? Mm. Oh, nah, nah. And there are some people that will outright lie to themselves their whole lives, cool. And if that's their journey, they have to wait until they experience immense pain before they mm -hmm. change. And even then some of them won't change. They'll just live a very unfulfilled life. So being honest with yourself and just saying, am I experiencing fear or doubt right now? Because mm. there are some times where I'm unconscious to it, right? I'm just 
doing my thing and I'm scared and I'm stressed and I'm worried. And I, I've, I've dropped into an unconscious pattern. Whereas yeah. if, you know, maybe, you know, I talk to you and you say, Hey, John, are you like scared right now? What are you scared of? It's like, wait a minute, I am. And then I can start digging around. Like, what am I really scared of? Oh, I'm scared that, you know, if I launch this new business, I'll lose all my money. It's like, well, what happens mm. if you launch this new business and you make 10 times? It's like shift in perception. Oh, I feel so much better now. Cool. Now I'm going to go do it. Yeah, that's epic. So, I mean, I don't know if that's, that's, that is one form of incongruency, but you've also got mechanical incongruencies. Like you could be in a relationship that is not congruent with your vision. I was in one. So I wanted to build a coaching business in the Gold Coast. And I was at a stage in my life where I had lost my confidence a lot um, through, through a really traumatic relationship. And my partner said, well, I want to move to Melbourne. And inside I was like, well, that's not going to be good for my business, but okay. You know what I mean? So I was, yeah. I was letting go of my dreams to appease someone else because I didn't feel good enough as I was. Mm. However, I went away on a course, um, did some, some mind, some deep mindset work. And I came back and I was like, I ain't moving. I was like, <laughs> I, I said, we're not moving. I was like, you can go if you want to go. I'm not going. We ended up breaking up and she moved back to Melbourne. And so that's an example of like mechanically incongruent. Mm. I want one thing. She wanted another thing. Wasn't going to work. Ended it. So you can have that kind of incongruence. You can have incongruence in your beliefs as well, in your belief systems. And that would simply be, well, this is what I want, but I don't believe it's possible. Or this is what I want. Whenever you hear the word, but, mm. and someone has an excuse, that's essentially an incongruence. Mm. It is something that is not aligned with what they want to achieve. So I say to people, everything you know, I want to achieve, say, like, say it, I want to achieve, I want to lose 10 kilos, or I want to uh, earn a million dollars in 12 years or in 10 years, but, and that, but sometimes it can be mm. quite superficial. Sometimes it can be quite deep. Superficial would be, um, but my job doesn't pay enough, right? It's mm. like, okay, well, why don't you change your job? Oh, then the real fears come up. Mm. Um, or it could be deep. I want to, you know, make a million dollars, but uh, I'm scared my friends won't be my friends anymore. And then you're getting to some deeper parts of a person that are probably buried away in the unconscious. And so it's just through process of personal development. Like reading books are good, but you're putting layers of conditioning on top. You're not deconditioning mm. old, getting rid of the old from the body. So really going to an event, attending or getting some coaching to help people unpack your limitations, your beliefs and your doubts mm. is, I mean, I've spent hundreds of thousands doing that. Mm. Um, so that's where you get your congruency. What do you mean by um, when you said like, you can go read books and you can like put conditioning over the top of your conditioning. Is that like you, cause obviously a person is going to be reading through whatever, through whatever lens they're going through life in. So you're saying that like they'll read a book, you know, decipher through their filter and then try and decipher what's going on within or? Yeah. So this is going to get pretty deep now, but your mind is a tool like any other um, part of your body. Your emotions mm. are tools. Your mind is a tool, but it's not actually you. Your physical body is a tool, but it's not actually you. And so when you learn by reading a book, you're, you're operating at the level of mind. Mm -hmm. So you're learning new informations. Maybe you're going to see things sort of differently. And that is not the deepest level of what drives a human being, the level of the mind. The, the emotions are a deeper level. For example, if at some time during your childhood, mm -hmm. you um, maybe your family, I've, I've dealt with a lot of people and, and trauma, um, and, and trauma doesn't have to be extreme. Like I'm talking about mm. men, men, young, young boys that were made to, you know, have oral sex with their dads. Like I'm talking some really messed up shit. That's, mm. that's obviously catastrophic, but even simple things like maybe your brother or your sister got more attention than you did. Right. And mm. you started to feel unworthy and it was consistent. And inside you were sad because you didn't feel loved. Mm. Now you deep down, it doesn't really like, like that is a lens you see the world through is I'm not lovable mm -hmm. and you don't even know it's there. You just think that's who you are. Mm. And so you could 
you could read books or concepts about self-love, mm. but deep down, it's almost almost part of your soul. It's not your soul, but it's it's deeper than just your mind. It's in your emotional mm. body. So you can you can say to yourself like, oh, I love myself or whatever, but that memory or those memories as a child that have been so forgotten about, you can't remember mm. them, they're actually still there. And mm. so you might learn something, try to act on it, but you feel like this heavy weight or this anchor or there's something that's just holding you back. The reason mm. that's happening is because there is an, something in the unconscious, which means you don't even know it's there, mm. right? And to go to a... A deeper level and this you know some people listening might write me off after saying this but past life regression work as well i, I had a past life regression with a girl on maybe uh four or five days ago mm. and we went through a process that went back seven years to she was involved in a plane crash and there's a lady on the phone i'm not going to go into the details and if you don't believe any of this that's totally fine um and she was in hysterical tears for about five minutes before I continued with the coaching session, just releasing all of this pain and suffering that she had experienced from a past life. Mm. Now you you can't remember that consciously. Mm. You need to go through the unconscious yeah. mind to get there. So that's what I mean by reading books is putting layers of ideas in your conscious mm -hmm. mind, which your conscious mind people say is like 5% of your day. The unconscious is 95% of your mm. behaviors, but reading more books isn't, isn't going to that deeper unconscious level. Yeah, gotcha. Cool. Cause so, so it's almost like like soul soul healing as opposed to mind healing. Correct. And, um I'll just share this just because I did a podcast with a um astrologer recently and she's been in astrology for like 35 years and done some really amazing work. And on our podcast she was talking about like this thread of con thread of consciousness about you know um your soul's been essentially been going on that journey uh year after year or lifetime after lifetime you know learning learning the lessons or learning she talks about like this this uh compassion it's like the soul soul going on this uh journey of compassion you know giving compassion to yourself enough to overcome your greatest fears and you know bringing your greatest message and stuff like that so it's super super interesting like really really interesting for me yeah that's yeah like, yeah i mean i'd say she's she's bang on yeah that's super interesting and like, what would you say, like, because I know that you've been in the personal development industry for quite some time now and you know, moving into business development and things like that now, but like, what do you see the difference uh, between like doing, uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is a word or not, or whatever, like the, the mind healing, as opposed from actually going into the soul healing? Because I mean, for me, I'm seeing like the soul healing, it's like the, like the deeper, deeper shadow work, the deeper regressions in regressions in that unconscious mind like what do you see the difference as like that mind mind healing to uh the soul healing everyone is different some people have you know been dealt a not too bad hand or have maybe gone through some healings in in the past that they're not aware of um some people don't need it mm. you know some people don't they're really they are genuinely maybe an old soul that they've lived their life in a very compassionate beautiful state and maybe maybe a few little mindset tricks here and there is all they need and mm. then there are some people that are they're just they're just, they've been they're not broken there's nothing wrong with them they've just been through a lot and they are damaged it's like a car that's been through a monster car crash it's going to take a lot of repair work to restore it and so we're all different and we all just have to play the the cards the hands that we've got some people most people will not do that level of healing mm. they, they it wouldn't even be a concept in their mind that that kind of mm. stuff exists um and so maybe in their lifetime they just work on a few little mindset tricks maybe find mm. a little bit more gratitude um a little bit more self-belief and live live a really positive life mm. and so that to me growth is the name of the game it doesn't matter if you're going at one kilometer an hour or a hundred as long as you're progressing mm. you're you're evolving and that is my belief is that's your purpose here is to evolve yeah to learn and grow not to repeat patterns to to essentially continue to transcend from that survival mentality 
up mm. to a very integrated holistic um pretty much oneness level of oneness mm. and and as long as you're moving towards that mm. you're a force for good if you're moving away from that i would say you're a force of destruction so i don't know how deep you want to go into this next question or not but like right now there's obviously a lot of changes happening in the world today um like you know we've obviously seen a lot over the last two years and been a lot happening prior to that that has been sort of not in the public view and all that kind of stuff but like right now there's you know different shifts happening in the universe causing more light to come down to the world here to be absorbed by other people would you say that like like obviously we're going through a shift you can see it see globally like in consciousness and stuff like that like for this next phase of consciousness on this planet i know it's a little bit off topic from what we started with but you know it is he's here uh do you see that those things those progressions in a person's development are going to be like speeding up as a result of the movement of where we where consciousness is heading yes yeah yeah for sure we've seen it in the last two years people you know they call it the the great awakening um and there have been lots of them throughout history. We, we follow we follow a spiral. So it's kind of like a cycle, but each time you rotate around, you progress mm. um, in consciousness. So we're coming to the end of a cycle. Uh, there's a book called The Fourth Turning, where we're going right now. We're at the we're sort of just past halfway through the crisis of 20, a 20 year crisis, and we're coming to the end. And the next part of the cycle is the high um and so yes is the answer to that and and you can see it there's more and more people where the illusion is being lifted and personal development kind of took off when when covid kicked in mm. it it because people stuck at home and they they started they stopped they had to stop and remember we said earlier when you ask questions you get like different answers and so they mm. stopped and they had nothing they weren't doing 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 so they got time to ask questions about their lives about what was important and all of a sudden that introspection caused awakening even little questions you could ask yourself is like why do you believe that you know money is evil why do you believe that and if you follow those breadcrumbs you're gonna have a really enlightening experience and an enlightening experience is a shift in consciousness it is it is light it is turning something that was once dark or unconscious into light um, I have a friend in the special forces. Anyone in the military is relatively unenlightened, right? I was there. I was there for seven years. I know what it's like. And the reason I say that is because you are told by authorities what to do. So you don't have to think for yourself. Um, however, he is, was a keen investor, still in the dark, right? Still under the illusion of life. Wanted to make money, all the normal stuff that you want to do. And then he researched the financial system because I was talking to him about cryptocurrency. I was like, if you want to make some money, do this. And he's like, Oh yeah, why crypto? And I was like, well, this reason, this reason. And, and I was like, look, follow the rabbit hole. Anyway, months later, he messaged me. He's like, dude, he's like one word awakening. And I was like, what, <laughs> like what happened? He's like, I've had my awakening. And I said, what happened? He's like, I've, I've, I studied the financial system and I realized that there's a small, 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 small group of people that set up this system to enslave humanity and i was like amen tell me more he's like i cannot explain it he's like but i can see clearly now he's and that's what it's like you know what it's like it's when you can see through the lies and manipulation and so yes people more and more and and the the, the more the I'm, i call them the forces of darkness the dark forces call it evil call it what you want um play their hand the more and more people are being forced to see through the illusion like things just do not make sense when you're forcing people to have an experimental thing when the numbers don't match or i don't know how deep you want to go into this but i i i love this stuff because this is the core of personal development now now what i mean by that is we're dealing with dark forces and light forces this is it doesn't get any deeper than that everybody has these two forces inside of them they really do one you could say is more egoic one is more the higher self and we're seeing that play out now on the global scale um and essentially people are picking sides 
Um, and and it's deep. And a lot of people will be like, John's crazy or whatever, but we're, we're seeing the ultimate duality of of our, our uh, I don't know if the universe is the right word, our planet and our species play out. And there's no more, like with the internet, it's all shared. What used to be hidden by the media, you only knew what you knew. And that's, you were just fed this narrow bit of information. Now, if you're on Telegram, if you're on Rumble or BitChute, you're getting the other side of the story and it is bloody enlightening. And so with the decentralization of information, yes, people are waking up quick. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. You, are you muted? No, I can't hear you, Dan. Wait there. Uh, am Wait I back there. on? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely it's so in line with, with personal development because, like, I know for myself, um, you know, uh, things just, like you said, with your friend studying the financial system, it's like things are clear as day for him. Like, he can totally understand what's happening. Like, you can see through the veil. And, uh, like, once you see through that veil and you see what is still out there in front of people's eyes trying to you know ultimately you know manip manipulation or influence a person on on that level it's you know definitely trickling down into their belief systems and uh causing them to live their life in sp specific ways so it's hugely bringing all that to the light definitely yep. yeah yeah and essentially that that force of the darkness is fear Mm. And the, the Native Americans have a word called Watiko, and I believe it is the mind virus and it is fear. Mm. So you can, you can either choose to decide based on fear or based on, some would say love, um, mm. but it's, the, it's, it's truth. I call it truth. It's like the fear mm. or the truth. And, and I think if you, well, I know if you can live your life based on following the truth, mm you will live that's where your purpose your genius is because you're you're not denying yourself access to to all of you and mm. death the fear of death is the ultimate destroyer of life if you're scared of dying you're there's no opportunity for you to fully live so as soon as you're okay with your death that gives you permission to fully live mm. so if fear is driving your decisions you, it's not possible to fully live so the first step that's why i keep saying to people what hell are you prepared to die on because once yeah. you're like i'll die for this bam now you've got permission to live your best life nothing can stop you you're just going to be energy is going to be flowing through you as soon as fear comes in the mm -hmm. energy stops flowing you got the goosey bumps. I, I got the goosebumps. That's huge because, like, yeah, like you said, just were talking about it while I was like conceptualizing that idea in my mind at the same time, and that's that's huge because, like, ultimately, that fear of death is like self-preservation. You're gonna stop stop doing things to like survive, and if that that fear is stopping you from actually what you want to actually do and live and create in this life, then you will never get there. So that's huge. That's it. Yeah, yeah those that accept death can are free to fully live. Mm. And until you can do that, if you if you see death as a bad thing, you cannot fully live. Mm. And it's so funny because for years I've always and people have said I'm cold. I'm not cold. I have a loving heart, but I used to go to funerals and appreciate and appreciate you know. Mm. And I've said when my mum dies, I, I sure I'll grieve and dad, but I'm I'm beyond that. I would I just appreciate them and love them so mm. much. Um, so yeah, I, oh, I was going to say, sorry to cut you off. I was like, that would then get back into conditioning again. It's like what you should and shouldn't be doing. Like, as in, oh, well, I mean, like if people are there, they're saying, oh, you should be, should be crying. You should be like conditioning, hard at conditioning sort of stuff, you know, in ancient, in ancient, um, cultures, mm. it wasn't, that wasn't the case. It was appreciation. It was a mm -hmm. celebration of life, not the morning of death. So mm. a funeral should be a celebration of life, not a mourning of death. Mm. Uh, and yeah, absolute conditioning. Shift your perception. And that's, that's when you ask the question, it's like, how do you know that's true, that I should be, I've, I've mm -hmm. got a cold heart? Why is that true? Oh, because you um crying or whatever. I've just got a more empowering perception than you do. You've just mm. been conditioned. Mm. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really awesome. And what would you say to, uh, what would you say to yourself if you would go back to like your twenty-year-old self, like thirty seconds of 
of mm -hmm. wisdom that you've collected now since then. God. <laughs> I honestly wouldn't change anything in the world. Yeah. It's definitely not been easy. Um, and there's been some, you know, very dark times. But I feel like if I went back and said something to him, it would have it would change where I am now, right? Mm. It would, because he would make a different decision and I would not be here right now. So I'm hesitant to do that. Um, the one thing I would... I, if I had to, it it would it, like how many how long how long do I have to talk to him? Uh, let's say thirty seconds. Might might be a deep <laughs> might be a deep and meaningful. Um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't do it in thirty seconds. I would just let him do what he needs to do and learn his lessons. It's not long enough to create the transformation that I want would want to create for him. So he has to do it through his own experiences. Um, but ultimately just follow, follow your heart, follow what feels good. Mm. Um, yeah. And stay true to yourself. Yeah. That's awesome. And um, for people who are listening here, like where, what's the best place that people can go and see more of your stuff or get in contact with you or find out what you've got on the horizons I'll be surprised if they want to after we talked about <laughs> that stuff. But um, oh, if people are here by the end, they're people who want to reach out. <laughs> <laughs> um, at John Templeton Official, you can get me there on Instagram, Facebook, even YouTube, and my website. So it's at J O H N T E M P L E T O N. Sometimes my accent makes <laughs> I say like E's and I's and weird things. Yeah. As long as you don't say woman, that's fine. Woman, is that what I say sometimes? I, I, forget, I forget what you say now. But... And pen. When I was like, hey, dad, pass me a pen. Yeah. He'd pass me a pen to like prod. And I'm like, no, I want to write something down. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, well, just to, for clarification for everyone, I'll put some links beneath the episode here. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, what is uh, something that people can keep an eye out for that you're working on right now or releasing soon? Or When does uh, this podcast come out? It'll be out this, uh, well, from the date of recording, it'll be out uh, three days after. Well, if you can get it out three days after, I've got a five-day challenge coming up. Starts on uh, the 28th. And I would say it's a free five-day challenge where it's we're building an unstoppable mindset. It's called Unleash Your Greatness. So, Dan, get this out double time. And people cool. come and join me for five days. It's completely free. And yeah, you'll, you'll absolutely love it. We're going to build your mindset. We're going to talk about your personality. We're going to talk about the story of your life and how to transform that so that you can reach your most audacious goals. Awesome. Very exciting. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate you jumping on today. And uh, yeah, it's been a brilliant chat and uh, looking forward to having you on at some point in the future, I'd say, again, and dive deeper into some of the things that we were feel like we were scratching the surface on a couple of things there. So we could... Uh, dive deeper into those in the future. Yeah, dude, I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye -bye. So since recording this podcast, John has released his very first book on Amazon. It's called The Thriving Coach, Five Essential Pillars and Strategies for Building a Successful Coaching Business. And, you know, I've known John for uh, quite a few years now, and I've seen just how far he's gone in a relatively short period of time. And, you know, listening to his podcast, you can gauge the uh, type of personal that he is. He applies what he learns at a, quite a high level. And with that application, he's been able to build a million dollar coaching business. So in this book, he's put together a step-by-step -step process for taking your coaching business to lucrative heights and accelerating your success towards making a gigantic impact in the lives of your clients. So if you're a coach and wants to scale your business so that you can gain in income, impact, and freedom, that you desire, then this book will provide the tools and strategies to help you achieve your business goals more rapidly than you ever thought possible. Beneath this podcast, I've included a link where you can check that out on Amazon. Highly recommend grabbing yourself a copy. I've ordered my one. And uh, I'm actually going to get John back on this podcast to do a podcast specifically about his book, The Thriving Coach.